Hey yardeners, it's Destry. Welcome back to my yard. It is the time of abundance here in August in my garden. However, I had to scoop up a few new things. So join me today as I take you through a plant haul with a ton of proven winners plants and some other goodies. All right, guys, so if you've been following along with my channel for a while, you know that I just got back from a vacation with my family in Central Oregon, and I was able to go to this really cool place. I had to show off my t-shirt today called Shillings Garden Market, and I have to show you the back. Check it out. <laughs> Is that fun or what? Um, anyway, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it down below. It was such a great experience to be on vacation with my family, but I am so grateful to be back in my own yard today and in my own garden. However, it is that moment when I looked around and realized I have so much to do. <laughs> like there's things that need to be harvested, uh, there's weeds, there's things that need to be deadheaded. There's just like a lot going on. So instead of doing all the chores I should probably be doing, I'm going to go ahead and take you through some new plants that I picked up recently. Um, I have been sort of collecting plants and I'm sort of at that moment where I need to make some decisions about where I'm going to put all these. So let me take you through what I got and then um, I will try to get some stuff planted up today. We'll see how far we get yardeners, but I'm excited to take you along for the ride. Okay, friends. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I scooped up some proven winners the other day, so I wanted to share with you what I got. I've been trying to challenge myself to get more like warm colored things. So the first one I have is a Super Bill's Lemon Slice. Gorgeous bloom, some kind of like some white striping on there. So those are hopefully going to pair with these. Um, this is another Super Bill's. This is the Tambourine Punch and really pretty there. So um, my plan is to redo a couple of my hanging baskets and possibly, um, you know, some planters to kind of like bring in some fall colors. So I'm thinking some yellows, oranges. Um, so then I did pick up two of these. This is a Preven Winters Golden Butterfly, full to part sun on these. So those are really gorgeous. Look at the bright, bright cherry yellow. Um, this is an Agarinthum. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I grabbed two of those. I thought those would look nice in a planter with, now I've never tried this one, but this is the Diamond Snow Euphorbia from Proof and Winners. And I just really love how bright and colorful, well, not colorful, I guess it's white, but it's like bright and cheery and it kind of has this like fluffy appearance. So I'm really excited to try this. Um, it seems like everyone raves about this particular Proof and Winners plant. So I'm excited to give it a try. Mr. Milo is joining me this morning to show you these. Um, and then I did grab this one. Now this one does not have the like warm fall colors, but I couldn't resist you guys. I've been eyeballing this one for a while. This is the Super Tunia Picasso in purple. And there's the tag on that one. And it has this um, pretty purple color with like this green, you know, margin on the edges. And it's just really gorgeous. And I thought, this was a really nice size. So um, one of these and a hanging basket would look really, really nice. And some of my hanging baskets have basically like petered out and they're kind of done for the season. So those are a few of the proven winners things that I got. I got a few bigger ones and I'll show you those in just a minute. Um, I also grabbed two, this was from my plant haul. Um, I went to the Home Depot and did a couple, did a little bit of shopping the other day. So this is the Shadowland Hudson Bay. Um, this is a hosta. You can see it's got a little burn there, but in pretty good shape. And this one was on sale. Pretty much everything I got, hey, dogs, pretty much everything I got was on sale. We might have some barking. I might have to stop and keep going. <laughs> hey, hey, Max and Milo. If you guys. Okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> Sorry about that. We live um, in a neighborhood where I have a big fence here. And so anyone that walks by, the dogs are, you know, they're real tough because they're about this big. Anyway, um, so I grabbed that Asta from the Home Depot. And then I did grab this one too. So this one is the Shadowland Autumn Frost. So that one's really pretty as well. So a couple Proven Winners Hostas. 
And then um, yesterday when I was at Shillings, I grabbed a few other things. So let's look at these. Here's more of these like warm colors I'm trying to bring in. This is a Heliopsis. It's a sunstruck perennial. Um, it's deer resistant and I loved the variegation on the leaves. So look at the leaves themselves. I'm really hoping this one will come back for me. I grabbed two of these. So I'm planning, I think I'm gonna put these in my side yard, which again, if you've been following my channel, you've been seeing my side yard and how it's like developing. So I think that's where those gonna go are gonna go. And then I grabbed two of these. So again, really beautiful, like warm, almost like an orangey bloom and dark foliage. And these are a false sunflower, another Heliopsis. So this should also be a perennial for me here in Willamette Valley, Oregon. So here's the other one. It's got tons of blooms on it. So I'm really excited for, you know, bringing in those warm colors to my landscape as well. Um, the next two are just two that I really couldn't resist. I just thought they were so gorgeous. So these ones are a Dianthus. Um, this is the American Pie Georgia Peach Pie. It's a perennial. And I loved how tall the blooms are. I feel like on Dianthus, a lot of times they're kind of short, squatty blooms. But look at these. I just, I'd never seen a Dianthus like this. And I have a kind of a collection of Dianthus in this one garden bed. And so I grabbed two of these to sort of add to that collection. And they come back really well for me. And they're pretty like pro prolific bloomers. Anyway, I thought this one was really gorgeous. So I scooped up two of those. Um, at shillings yesterday. And then I have three more big boy plants. Um, they are proven winners. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'll show you those. And you guys, I have some planting to do. I have some planting to do. Tell me if this happens to you. It's kind of like the end of the season. So everything goes on sale, at least around my area. And then it's so hard. It's so hard when you go to the nursery or the garden center to like say no to stuff because it's like, oh, everything's 40% off. And I don't know. All I know is I've got enough plants for now. I have to like <laughs> stop myself. No more shopping. No more shopping. You guys hold me to it. Okay. All right. Let me show you a couple other things I got and then we're going to get planting. Okay, so if you saw my Shillings Garden Market Tour, you saw this gorgeousness. You knew I was going to come home with one of these proven winners, didn't you? So this is the um, Summerific Holy Grail, and it is the a hibiscus perennial. And I just, you guys, I just couldn't say no. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go, but I had to bring it home. And then just to kind of go this way in my greenhouse, um, here's the other ones, the big, the big ones. Here we go, you guys. Again, I could not help myself. These are Limelight Primes and I have two of these. They were half off and I just, I've been wanting these for so long. And let me show you, I do have a specific project for these and I know exactly where they're going to go. Um, so I'll show you that here in a minute, but I mean, can we just take a minute? Uh, I just... Yeah, I'm just a hydrangea girl, which is so funny because literally last summer was the first time I ever purchased and grew a hydrangea and it was a proven winners and it's done so well for me. So let me show you where these are going to go. Okay, guys, excuse my mess of stuff here, um, but here is where here's the problem. Let me show you this. So these are roadies. These are rhododendrons. And this is what happens when they get too much sun. So basically they have just French fried. So all the way up to the top. Now I've tried to prune these in sort of a, like a topiary form or what's called a standard form. It started growing back at the bottom. There's two of them and they're gorgeous when they're in bloom, but they only bloom for like a week and then they're done. And then this is what they look like the rest of the year. And what's funny is this is only within the past, like, I would say three years that I've noticed them doing the scorch. So I talked to my husband about it. And so we are going to take them out and it's too bad because they are, you know, they're, they're old roadies, but it's just funny that here in, you know, the Willamette Valley, Oregon, where I live, it's, you know, something like this, a plant that used to get a lot of shade is now getting too much sun. Like this is not a good spot for these anymore. Um, it could have something to do with the tree that came out in our property. Um, here, I'll sort of show you that over here. So we used to have 
two big giant pine trees and now we're down to one so maybe that's part of it maybe that shaded that enough to you know make that scorch happen this year even worse but anyway those are going to come out and then the two limelight primes i'm thinking are going to be like the center centerpiece in this area so yeah, I'm excited for that project, but that's for another day. But yeah, just so you know, I think that's where they're going to go. Anyway, let's go ahead and get some stuff planted up today and see how much we can get done in the yard. So I think this is where I'm going to go ahead and put the dianthus. So you can see I have a couple other mounds of dianthus that I've cut back already for the season. Um, so I think I'm going to pop those two there uh, someplace in this garden bed. And then I wanted to show you, this is Gumfrina. So let me show you this. This is Gumfrina that I grew from seed. And literally, this is like all it did. <laughs> so it's like not very impressive to me. So I think I'm just going to clip those two little flowers, maybe dry them and pull those out of there and make some room for this really pretty Dianthus just to kind of continue um, the look I have here of the kind of little mounded um, Dianthus. And uh, I think I have a couple other little plants in here. So um, yeah. So I think that's where those are going to go. So let me look around and see what else is going to go where. is kind of assess my planters and decide you know what can kind of stay in the planter and what maybe needs to be planted out in the landscape so for example I have this um, this is a um, mint no a sage it's a purple sage I believe and you can see it's kind of gotten leggy there's nothing else in this pot so I'm going to go ahead and pop that out and incorporate that into my landscape. I don't know if it'll perennialize or not, but it'll be happier than where it is right now. I also have a coleus here that, although coleus likes sun, I feel like it's getting a little too much sun. It's getting some scorch. Um, the leaves are kind of bleached. So I'm gonna also pull that out and find a different spot in the landscape. The super tunias down here are doing pretty well, but so I might leave those, but I think, I want to, you know, kind of redo this area with some like more fall colors. And then these are doing really, really well. But again, um, I think I'm just kind of done with the pink as far as in planters. The geraniums, I want to overwinter in my greenhouse. So I'm going to put those two in maybe a smaller pot. 
and then go ahead and tuck these um, out into the landscape. And I think those are a zinnia of some kind. So anyway, I'm going to kind of see what I've got here and basically make room in these pots or, you know, just kind of make room for some other things, some of my new plants that I showed you.
and I'll show you where those were. It was just like really a, not a good place for them, you know? So I think that's part of being a gardener is like realizing that like, oh, I planted this there and now it's got too much sun or it's got too much shade. I'm going to dig it up. I'm going to move it. Let's try it in a different spot. Um, at least I find that's true for myself. So anyway, let me show you the front and I'll show you what I did out there in the spot that I dug up the dinner plate dahlias and moved them to here. So this is my front tree that's in full bloom now. Um, it's really beautiful and the hummingbirds and pollinators love it. But underneath here is where I had the two dinner plate dahlias. So what I did is I took my two um, hostas that I showed you earlier in the video and I just popped them in here. So currently, you know, with this tree all bloomed out, they're going to get a lot of shade. So I'm hoping they do well here in the spring. They get quite a bit more sun, but in the spring, hostas aren't going to mind the sun because that's when they, you know, come out of dormancy. And then I've also got um, my daylilies, which are done for the season, and then my uh, shasta daisies, which are done for the season. So those are just kind of hanging out, doing their thing. Um, but I'm hoping this will be a better placement for these two hostas rather than the dahlias. You could see that just wasn't enough sun for those dahlias. So it's all about the shuffle. It's all about moving stuff around when you need to. All right, guys, so let me show you a couple more things I was able to get done. I was able to get this coleus in the ground here. I thought it kind of mirrored the other one. So I got that out of the pot and got that one planted up there. And then I started digging over here. Um, I have a hydrangea that needs to go in the ground here in this blue pot. And it's pretty rocky soil. And then I was thinking about putting the hibiscus back there. But I'm just not sure if it's going to get enough sun. And unfortunately, this fern, I think, is getting too much sun. So then I started thinking, well, since I'm doing the pot shuffle or the planting shuffle, I might as well move that fern back and maybe move the hydrangea up. And I'm not sure about the hibiscus. So anyway, all that to say, I might be moving some more things around in this bed. So I think that's going to be part two of this video. Um, I also have another thing I'm going to show you that's going to be part two. But before we do that, can we just for a minute take a look at my salvia? It is looking so good. Anyway, okay, let me show you what else is coming for part two. Okay, so here's my thoughts. Um, even though some of these Rebecca are perennials, I'm going to go ahead and do a new planter, like focal point using all of this so i decided to kind of save out all the orange and yellow i just want like a really nice warm pop of color here we see this little corner i see it from my um, sliding glass door and from my dining table so i like to have something pretty here so i think stay tuned part two i'm going to plant this up um, i also have a uh lysianthus that's coming back from last year i overwintered it in my greenhouse they're not perennial for me here but it's in that same color scheme so anyway more on that to come but for today i'm beat it's hot and i'm ready to go inside so that's going to be it for me today you guys i'm pretty tired i've been out at it for a couple hours and but I feel really good about a lot of the stuff I got done. I definitely wanted to rearrange some of those potted plants, get them in the ground, make room for something fresh. Um, yeah, just a lot of like plant swapping out and moving around and reconsidering location. And that's just kind of what we do as gardeners. And honestly, that's one of the things I love about, you know, fiddling around in my garden and in my yard is that it's creative. Like I get going on one thing and then I'm like, oh, actually those nasturtium need to come out. Those are getting too much sun. I need to move those over here. And you, you kind of just, or at least for me, I sort of just like bounce around and um, it's fun. It's creative. And I never quite know, you know, what I'm going to get done, but it's always a work in progress. It's never finished. Right. And so it's just really fun and relaxing for me. So I hope that you are able to go get in your yard today. It's a really fun place to be. And stay tuned for part two of this video where I will be planting up a few more things probably tomorrow. All right. See you later, guys.